Welcome to today's left brain lesson on loopies. I mean, you know, loops. Sorry, that was that was lame. We're going to start with learning about for loops, probably the most common type of loops. And then we'll look at a cool thing called enumerate, which we'll use all the time to keep that stuff in order. And then we're going to look over what kind of types inside of Python we can even loop over. Because at first, you don't really know. Strings, range, lists, dicks, who knows? And then we're going to look at starting and stopping within loops. So sometimes you want to break out of a loop, something changes, you're done with it. How do you trigger those kind of things? Then we're going to look at a while loop, very similar to a for loop, but it's going to work on a different type of conditional. And then we're going to look at nesting. So can we have loops inside of loops? It's very, um, what's that movie called? Inception-y kind of, loop inception. And then we're going to look at a really fun thing. The ah, heck, this is so fun, I'm just going to show you now. We can use a loop to boom, make, make a status bar. It's going to get, you know, see how far through the process of looping we are, which I just think is the coolest thing ever. And we can do that by only importing one module. So stay with me. You're not going to want to miss this episode of looping the lesson. So what do you think is going to happen when we take this variable food, that's a list, and we put it in this syntax? For and we just make this word up. It doesn't always have to be item. It can be the letter I. Sometimes you'll see it as the, like, you know, food. this will be like foods with an S. And then this one will be like food without an S, something like that. Of course, then we have to run this whole thing again. But why not? Let's just do it. Foods, food. Oh, there it goes. That's what you get. You get pizza, pasta, salad, nacho listed out. So what we're saying here is for food in foods print whatever this thing is, okay? And it's a great way to just name things in a way that you understand and to understand that this, as long as it's a list or a type that can be looped over, that that's all we have to do. So what do you think is going to happen when we add in one more thing called enumerate? We're going to wrap this function around our foods. Oh man, am I going to have to fix all of these? Okay, around foods. Is that what you expected? Very powerful, very important function that we can wrap something that can be looped in is called enumerate. And this allows us to create both an index and an item. And we can print out the index, meaning how many times the loop itself has happened, and the item being the place inside of the loop, the list or the items that we've passed into it. Excited about for loops, like, you know, you're thinking about all the cool stuff you could loop over, and you're probably thinking, but what stuff can I loop over? Who can tell me that? Well, I can tell you that. Let's look at different things that are commonly looped over. For instance, strings, might not have thought it, but check this out. The string hula hoop can just be passed into that same syntax for item in and then the name of the string, and we can print out the item hula hoop and it's going to create something where each character is its own item because we talked about it before strings are kind of like lists in the behind the scenes now what about this remember the range wait have you seen range you haven't seen range yet so check this out for i in range of 20 so what we're saying is create a list of 20 depends on how deep you went into the concept of types if you saw range or not but so you know they're basically just like a list i think one through 20 of a list and Boom, there it is. You can do cool stuff with it. Okay, so what about jumping over a gap, okay? So don't worry if you haven't seen this thing yet, but this is another l range, which is a list, but it's going to skip every two. So actually, the reason I like this in particular is that it goes two, four, six, eight, you know? Two, four, six, eight. Pretty cool, huh? So we know we can loop over strings and ranges, and we actually already know we can do lists, but just to show you again, to keep it in context with everything else, we can make a list, uh, our bucket list in this case, and then we can just print out the things that we still need to do before we die. What about dictionaries? These are where it starts to get really powerful and a little complicated, so stay with me here. We created this dictionary called Colors, and it's got two items per dictionary, a key and a value, as we talked about before, and we can loop over it in the same way. And the first item that we do is going to always be the key. If we only put one kind of argument in between the for and the in, then we will get the keys, the first part of the dictionary. 
we can also get the values, right? By putting k comma v in colors, and then we use this dot items method at the end. Okay, so a few things to remember here is it doesn't matter what letters we're using here. Like this is not going to work. Okay, I mean it's it's going to work in the sense that it's going to print out both, but it's not going to print out just the key. And if you're wondering why it didn't just print out the key this time, it's because we're using this items. If we did that, we would get just the key. All right. Hopefully that is clear. And now you know that we can use dicks, lists, ranges, and strings in loops. Another way to construct a loop is called a while loop. And these can be useful in the right situation. So it works like this. We start with a variable. In this case, we're going to make a bunny hop. And we're going to say that we want it to hop three times. And we construct the loop in a way that instead of using for, we use while. And then while, while, while hops is greater than or equal to zero, then we're going to print hops. And then after we've printed it, we're going to decrement it by one. That way, it eventually comes to an end. So we get three, two, one hops. We do the same thing with something like temperature. We're going to say while well, the temperature is greater than 112, then print the temperature, and then decrement it. And notice this time we're using the shorthand. And we can say, Oh, the tea is now cool enough to drink. It wasn't when it was 115, but it is now at 112. So here's the question. Can we count up also? Of course we can. If we can decrement, we can increment. And that can be useful in many cases when we want something to just happen a certain amount of time. You know, we don't always have to have like this nine kind of hard coded in either. We can say like, you know, check a database, see how many students in a classroom we have. That number turns out to be 32, and then just put that variable there. So then it will count up just as many times as we have you know, students in the classroom or something. And we don't need to actually construct a for loop and have that data in exactly the kind of format that Python can loop over. So you can see the advantages. Let's look at breaking out of these loops. So there's going to be times when we don't want the thing to just run x amount of times. We want it to check some kind of a condition, like should I still be doing this, or has the goal of this loop been accomplished and it's time to stop. So let's start by just placing a conditional inside of a for loop and show you what that looks like. All right, and don't let this character throw you off. I just thought it'd be fun to go get another, you know, UTF-8 icon so you guys would know how how fun Python can be. So in this case, we're running a range. So it's going to run six times. And it's going to ask if this Captain Picard icon is three, print make it so, else print not so. So this is what we get. Not so, not so, not so, make it so, not so, not so. Pretty cool, huh? So you can see that it's just running through it. And then when it found the one that was equivalent to three, because we used our is, conditional, then it said make it so. And it was made so. And the Starship Enterprise survived that encounter. But here comes another encounter. Will Captain Picard make it so this time? For Captain Picard in range six, if Captain Picard is three, then print make it so. But then we're going to break out of the loop. So we're not going to get to the rest of them. So will he make it so? He will. But he's not going to make more not so's afterwards. So. This break, kind of as it seems like it would be, it just takes the entire loop and stops doing it. It breaks out of it. OK, so we also sometimes might put the break before the print statement. So do you think it just it executes everything in this block of code and then breaks? Or do you think it's going to print something underneath the break? Well, let's find out. Not so. OK, so we have to remember that when it breaks, it really breaks, like right on this line. It's not just breaking out of the loop at this code but it's where it's specifically located. So, you know, that can be another bug in your code at some point. You might say, like, when, when I was breaking out, did I really complete everything I needed to complete? Because as soon as it sees that word, it's done, even if you're already in this uh, block of code being executed as valid. All right, so enough with breaks, enough with conditionals. What about continue? That's kind of a weird one. We're in the, you know, the Star Trek deck with Captain Picard from the next generation, obviously the best version of Star Trek. Here's how it goes. For Captain Picard, I just wanted to use a Unicode 8, so don't let that scare you. You can use any letters you want or any word you want here, but I chose Captain Picard Unicode icons. So for Captain Picard in range of 6, if Captain Picard is 3, print make it so. Else, mm, also make it so. So 
So we uh, make it so is all over the place. How many times will Picard make it so? Yeah, six times. That's pretty obvious, but we're building up to stuff here, okay? Now, what if we wrap it in the enumerate? Now we have uh, an index, so we can say how many times this is looped, independent of knowing exactly that this is a range six. It's easy for us to see in this example, but a lot of times it won't be. And when we do this, we are going to have the same thing, but now we also have our index to help us keep track of how many make it so's we have. So, so far, Captain Picard's like making it so every direction, you know? Like, should we fight the Klingons? Make it so. Should we, you know, do something good for someone? Make it so. He's doing that everywhere. But now, all of a sudden, continue is into the loop. So, when we get to the third part of the loop, the third iteration, and Captain Picard becomes a valid true statement, because Picard is going to be three, we're going to have to make it so and then continue. What do you think is going to happen? Psych, nothing yet. Ooh, even more buildup, you say, Dylan. More, you're building up more and more, and it's so intense. I don't see why Continue did anything, because it doesn't do anything, according to this example. Well, that's because it was underneath the statement. Now look, what if Continue is put in front of print? What do you think is going to happen now? One, two, three make it so's, and four no make it so was made so? That's because continue isn't just something that applies to this whole block. It's specifically that line of code. And this can be where bugs come in sometimes in your code because you're like, I don't know, I executed it, it was valid, and then I continued, but it didn't happen. So it's actually something you always want to put you know, down here at the bottom, like it is in, is in this, this example. So in this example, it's saying if this and then continue, but there's nothing else to continue down here, so we don't see it. All right. So to make this really clear, what's happening is that when it hits continue, it's not breaking out of the loop. The loop is not stopping, but it is going to stop doing anything below it in its specific block. So this print statement never got a chance to be made so. It just went all the way back up here to the loop and then continued. But it never missed a beat. See, we've got the index here to prove that. Three, four, five, six. It just didn't make it to this, even though that was valid. Okay, well, that's break and continue for you. So now let's not take a break and continue on with nesting. Well, welcome, fellow birds, to our next section on nesting. Twerp, twerp, or tweet, 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 tweet. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting a little crazy in this room, but nesting is a very difficult task for a baby bird like you to learn. And it's my job as the mom, actually the dad, bird to teach you how to build a nest. And I am going to do it in the only way I know how. I'm just going to throw you into the deep end. We're just going to push you out of the nest and you're either going to fall to the ground and die or you're going to learn how to nest. So we have a variable that's set to an empty list and we're going to append a few things to it. Now from the outer ring, we're going to be appending one and two. And from the inner ring, the inner loop here, we're going to be appending 11 and 12. So I also put these in order of true and false so you can see that it's this one then this one. Now there's no real good way to, I think, explain this. I tried a few times in rehearsal, but I think best just to print it out and let you guys look at it. And let's talk through it best we can, but it's one of those things that I would say keep staring at it, maybe pause your video kind of thing. So if you're ready, of course you're not ready. You're a baby bird. You don't know what I'm doing, but no sympathy. Got to push you out. It's for your own good. <clears throat> All right, you flew. Good job. You're a flying bird now. So let's see how you did it. All right, we have the very first thing that was printed, that was appended, is the 11. So it obviously read from the first ring first, and then it printed our true statement, and then it went and got our big stick, our first big stick one. Then it did the next thing, and that was print the false version of the same small stick and big stick. But here's where it gets interesting. So now it moved up to 12 on the inner ring. It kept being true, and it kept the same position on the second loop. It didn't go all the way back. It just looped this one once, then looped this inner one twice. So you can see now it's got a false, but we're still on the first iteration of the bigger loop. And then once it was done with that, it finally went up to the bigger loop, and then it ran this, appended the 11, and then the 11 again, and then it went up to the second 
12, and then the second 12. Okay, so I guess point is it's like loop, 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 doo doop, doo doop. So, so it'd be like one, two, one, one, two, two, like that. Make sense? Kind of tricky, but just play with it and get your head around it. Here's another way with a little bit more nesting so you can see um, if we had a list that was already pre-made and it has you know single digits, double digits, and then triple digits, if we were to do a for loop, a for loop, and then print out everything, you can see that it will print in sort of this pyramid order. One more thing to get you kind of thinking about how to do it is for i in range of 1 through 10, okay? Another for loop, which is x in range for 11 through 20. In this case, you're going to see that it's going to be pretty long, and it's actually going to print... 11, 12, all the way up to 19, and then boom, back to 11, 12, all the way to 19, and then boom, back to 11, 12, all the way up to 19. And I think you get the picture. But guess what? All of this work was not in vain whatsoever because we are now going to learn the coolest thing that you can do with a loop ever. That is watch your nest get built with a progress bar. Yeah, yeah, boop, boop, we did it. Loops are done. We have completed this lesson. Yeah. Subscribe to our Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.